basically holding the hearing for us or the meeting for us. And Bennett worked with Wyden on putting together the Healthy Americans Act. It's one of the proposals that's out there. He shared some information with us, and one of the things he said is the only way that this will work is we have to mandate that every single person will buy health insurance, regardless of whether they want it or not, they will be forced to buy it or they'll be penalized tax-wise. Okay? We also heard last week that President Obama saying, if you buy a rich plan, you're going to have to pay extra for that because you choose to buy a richer plan and have more coverage. They're going to hit you for that. I don't think that's necessary. But one of the things Senator uh, Bennett said, and these are his words, he said, Medicare is $34 trillion in the red, and Medicaid is $30 trillion underwater. So collectively, the two single-payer plans that we have that the government runs were $64 trillion in the hole with future obligations. Medicare now, they say, is $40 trillion on its own. So I don't think the government's doing a very good job in administering these costs effectively. They want to take over for the rest of us. The other thing that Senator Bennett said is that they would have been forced out of business many years ago due to their inefficiencies and continued losses if they were a regular insurance company. So if they were Blue Cross, UPMC, United, or whatever, they would have been forced out of business because of the losses that they had. So I'm concerned with that. How many of you think there's an issue with Medicare fraud? How many of you think we have a problem there? Absolutely. Just to share some information now, ABC News had something recently on this, but they used Miami, the Miami area alone, just as an example. There's 1,600 different vendors that bill Medicare from that area, whether it's for wheelchairs, walkers, whatever it might be. And when they did some research, out of those 1,600, they found out 481 of them don't even exist. Some of them are post office boxes. Some of them are empty little offices with a uh, desk and a chair and a phone book, but no phone, no employees. Um, they found one of them was uh, billing for wheelchairs, and it was a pizza shop. And they didn't have any wheelchairs, but they were being paid millions of dollars. Okay? That Medicare fraud alone in the Miami area, those 481, the fraud was $237 million in the past year. One year. Overall, they say that there's an estimated $68 billion in Medicare fraud every year. $68 billion. And then they have another $133 billion per year of unnecessary or non-medically necessary claims that are being paid that shouldn't be. So you add the two of those together, that's $200 billion a year in inefficiency just from that. Now, if they say it's going to cost us a trillion dollars over 10 years, if you take that $200 billion, over 10 years, that's $2 trillion. They would more than cover the cost. So all they have to do is learn how to police things themselves first. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that Washington has a clue what's going on. I don't think Washington is very serious about trying to fix the problem. I think they have their own ideas as to what they want to do, and they're going to continue moving forward with it. I think they've lost touch with reality. The point I want to leave everybody with is I want to remind you, we're a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. I think it's time that we bring Washington back to the people and that we bring common sense government back to Washington. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, well, like I said, my name is Amy Menefee and I'm with Americans for Prosperity. And uh, Patients First is our healthcare project. We, um, just to tell you a little bit about who we are, we have over 700,000 members um, nationwide. And uh, we have 25 state chapters. We're working on getting a chapter here in Pennsylvania, and I think it's going to be a good one. So I hope we can get that, uh, get that together soon. Because I follow this in Washington, um, I wanted to kind of bring, bring some, some comments from that perspective. And I noticed not very, not very many of you watched the president's speech. <laughs> and I don't think you missed anything, um, except for the exciting outburst that was mentioned. But um, he didn't really say anything new. I was amazed. I had to sit there and watch the entire thing. And, and he talked about the same proposals and the same ideas that they've been talking about for months now. And I think, you know, some people said, well, maybe he's stepping off of the, the government-run plan, the government, uh, what they call the public option, which, as we know, would soon be the only option if it were put into practice. Um, he's, some people read his speech to mean that he's backing off of that. Others said, oh my gosh, he's leaving it in. So you can interpret that, I guess, one of two or three different ways. But the important thing that I think people um, are going to be talking about, they're doing it now, they're going to be talking about it soon in the future, is this individual mandate. 
And uh, you know, we talked about Massachusetts already, how that's, that's exactly what they did. We have a laboratory. The president talked about doing laboratories for tort reform. Well, we have some laboratories for a lot of these different things. Texas, for example, is a laboratory for tort reform, where it's really brought their costs down. Um, but the laboratory for the individual <coughs> mandate is Massachusetts, and their costs per person are now 30% higher than the rest of the nation. And they don't have 100% compliance. They don't have 100% um, insured population. And their state is trying to figure out how in the world they're going to fund it. They've had to raise the fine every year since they put the program in for people who are not buying the prescribed health insurance because, of course, that's part of the deal. If you don't buy it, then you have a fine. And so they just keep raising the fine every year and raising the fines on businesses. And the business, business fines and business mandates are also part of the Washington plan that they would put in at a time when I think we can all agree that especially our small businesses don't need these mandates of paying an 8% payroll tax, as the House bill had, um, to, to, for health care for their workers. So th these are a couple of the major things that he's not backed off of. And of course, in the primary for president, he campaigned on this issue against Hillary Clinton, who was for the individual mandate. And now he is for it, and he's painted that in his speech as taking the best ideas from everyone. And that's how he's coming up with his plan, uh, because he took the best ideas from his opponents. <laughs> so he's, he's done a good job of spinning that one. But um, that's going to be something I think you're going to be hearing more about in the, in the coming days. And of course, there's also the possibility they could rename something to the tune of a co-op um, that I'm sure you've heard about that. That's a possibility, which they, there's a debate about how much government control there would be in that kind of a situation. But we believe that if the government is setting it up, then they're ultimately going to control it. They're going to set up a co-op and tell people what it has to include, what it has to run. Um, and I think that there are so many details that the American people are waiting to hear. They're waiting to hear, okay, you want us to all buy the same type of health insurance? You know, you want to cover everybody, make every, mandate all 1,000 zillion conditions that you can possibly come down with. That's all going to be covered. Well, how much is it going to cost when we all have to buy it? They haven't mentioned that, nor have they told us what it would cover. Um, and so when we ask these types of questions, then we get dismissed and saying, oh, well, there's not really a bill yet. You know, well, there's a couple Senate bills. There's a House bill. Uh, the president keeps talking about his plan, which is just a nebulous set of ideas. Um, but there are bills there, and we've read them. A lot of people um, that come up to us at these rallies say, I read the House bill, you know, all 1,000 pages of it. And so I know exactly what they're trying to do. So they're really leaving the details out, and I think that the person that they're going to leave a lot of those details to, if they're able to do this, is someone like Kathleen Sebelius, the Health and Human Services Secretary. And when you talk about tort reform, that's what the president actually said the other night, is that he wasn't going to try and get that in the legislation, um, but he, to throw us a bone on tort reform, he basically said, well, we'll look into that, and I'll put Kathleen Sebelius in charge of that. And uh, some, some folks on the Americans for Prosperity team were immediately laughing because they said, well, she was a lobbyist for trial lawyers. <laughs> so I don't know if she's exactly the best person to, uh, to lead that effort. It sounds more like they're just putting it on the shelf uh, silently to the side. So these are the types of things um, that we're hearing about right now, and I'm very excited that you guys have come out here today. I mean, you're so rowdy, I can tell why they call you an angry mom. <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 somebody was saying earlier about the crowds from the 9-12 event in D.C. being dismissed and being ignored, and they just don't seem to get that that only makes us more upset. <laughs> that only makes people more motivated to call their senators and call their representatives and the time for that was not just in the August recess, because they are back now and they are doing some hard dealing on these bills. And people are, people are flip-flopping from day to day. Sometimes, you know, I heard something the other day saying, oh, Grassley might be signing on to Senator Baucus's bill. You know, you never know what's going to happen. And that's why it's so important for you to keep calling them and to keep sending them the emails visiting their district offices. You know, they're back in Washington, but when a, when a crowd of 20 people or so shows up at their district office to send them a message, then that they have to register that. They can't ignore you for doing that. And so I think